We're here with Mississippi College head coach John Bland as we get set to take on the North Alabama Lions this weekend in Florence. First of all, coach, let's go back to last weekend's game against Shorter. You got the win against the Hawks. Describe a little bit of the atmosphere after that ball game on the field and in the locker room for us. Well, you know what? It was uh, when you're going through a season like this, no matter what, though, if you're winning or losing, when you have a game like that and it uh, ends up right down to the wire and you get that victory, it's so exciting. And I feel like most of the players felt just like me. You know, it was uh, exciting and uh, proud for our, all the fight and the hard work they put in and came out on top of the victory. That was uh, really good, really good to see. Well, after Shorter took the lead there in the second half, uh, the Choctaws got the ball back with under three minutes to play, marched down mm -hmm. the field and kicked the field goal. Talk about the play calling on that drive, because I thought the Choctaws, you guys did a really good job at spreading it out and keeping them off balance. You bet, and uh, Coach Bright did a great job with that and just uh, got the ball to the places where, you know, they weren't covering the most. And a lot of times, some of that turned into quarterback runs uh, when they spread out there and took away our, our receivers. And we also had great protection. One time I remember we were sitting back in that pocket for a good three, three to four seconds and hitting Nate Fashon right over the middle. Uh, down the field was a big play. So uh, the protection was great. Uh, Ty Job did a really good job of uh, pocket presence, uh, hit, hit some passes, and we got some key first downs. Early on in that drive, we had a key first down. We had a guy, we caught the ball, but our knee was down, it was a little low throw. And uh, so we were kind of backed up and we just were patient. Uh, and then we had a third down and, and five or so. Kel got the first by two yards. So it was just good. A lot of, a lot of things we've worked on uh, versus our defense, which is really good to do. The competition helped us uh, in that situation. So it, was, uh, it paid off. Well, you mentioned the protection, and I thought the offensive line did have a really good ball game. And yeah. it, was, it was the game that they needed because they've been beat up all year long, but they played well. They had. We had some guys that have really been fighting and battling through the injuries. Uh, and that hurts. You know, the offensive line is – and down the trenches right there is so important to your offense and defensive production. So uh, very difficult when you got some young guys in there, maybe a little outmatched sometimes, uh, but they've been getting better and better each week. And we got some guys back as well that helped us. Up front defensively, I thought the Choctaws did a good job. They gave up some yards, but they came up with big plays when it matters, whether it's stringing somebody outside the side right. or, or those the turnovers down at the red zone. No doubt about it. The first half, just think back to the, to the ball game, and uh, they got down there inside the red zone one time and, and had a pretty good gain on a pass. It was about six or seven yards, maybe, maybe more, but we got over there and got people to the ball. And Colton McGee, I believe, forced a fumble, mm -hmm. and we got on that ball, which was good. Then right to the last – you know, plays of the, of the, not the last play of the first half, but real close. Uh, they were on the one yard line and we, we got that timeout. And uh, hey, they're not in the end zone yet. And we get up there and you have to finish those drives and they didn't, they had a bad snap. And Julian Charles got on the football. We were able to take a knee and get it out of there with a 20 to seven um, lead, which with those two, if they would have scored those two times, that's our defense just being stingy right there. You know, of course, that would probably have been, uh, you know, a, a tie game or at least 20 to 21, somewhere in that range. But that was really big. We come out in the second half, and we weren't able to get the stops like we wanted until that last one. We did the first drive, stopped them on the five, and our offense uh, answered by a 95-yard drive, which put us up 27 to seven. And then late in the ball game, when we were down and we, we turned the ball over to them, for the second time in a row with a pass, with a good good play by their defender, but also a, a fumble, um, we got a big stop. And forced the field goal and they missed it, kept us down by two, which was so big, and it, it was the difference in the ball game. So with the drive, it was a, it was a total team effort. It really, it really was. Our uh, special teams did great as well, and we'll talk about Greg, of course, but, but uh, the kickoff returns was so big in field position, and that's been good for us all year long. We have two guys who are leading the conference. You know that? Mm -hmm. uh, Kel is number one and Darius is number two in kickoff return average. That's two of our guys who are leading the league in kickoff return average. Now, that's just not one person. That is the whole unit who is responsible for that. But you got to have some good runners, too. They did a great job. Uh, they both did some during the ball game, which helped our field position. And of course, field position is not only for the offense, but it is for the defense, too. So when they get that ball, they have the long, hard way to go. Oh, you mentioned Greg Nichols hit three field goals on Saturday. Yeah. And he hasn't had a whole lot of opportunities this year, but he made the most of them this week. Man, it was so big. And you know what? The, the whole drive down the field, I continued to, to look and see when do we get in field goal range. I felt that much confidence in Greg and our unit right there. 
uh, that much confidence. So as we got closer, I wasn't trying to get to the 47 yard mark or something like that. I wanted to get in there where it was a very makeable field goal. But once I knew it was good, I started looking at that clock and I said, let's just not let them have a single second. They had a big receiver and a quarterback with a big arm. And I said, I don't want to give them one shot at the end zone at all and uh, know how hard that is to defend. So we wanted zero seconds on the clock when the field goal went through the uprights. And that's exactly what it, that puts a lot of pressure on Greg. But uh, you know, they're the ones with the football and they made it happen. Well, you mentioned the Hawks not being able to finish on drives. The Choctaws were. They got in the red zone five times, scored all five times, and that's the kind of thing you've been looking for all season long. It is. The only thing we could have done better was in, instead of Greg having three field goals, we could have had three touchdowns. Now, the last one, we wanted a field goal, and that's what we were looking for. The other two, though, we'd have liked to have gotten in the end zone. We had some penalties offensively uh, that hurt us a little bit, some that backed us up some, but we didn't finish on those two. I felt, felt like our offense was good enough versus shorter although Shorter was fighting for a victory too, just like us. And, uh, but I felt like we could have scored touchdowns and, and, and if we would have executed 100%, we probably could have, but we did get three. Which you know, in a ball game like that, when you don't, you need every point. And it came down to a one point ball game, so every point counts. Well, you had two running backs, Ty Jubb, your quarterback, Tiberius Lampkin, your tailback, who got over 100 yards rushing. And uh, again, it's been a struggle with the run game this year, but those two guys did a great job of picking up significant chunks at yes. the time. Yes, you know what? It has to do with blocking, uh, protecting the football, not having negative plays. That's something we did more better than anything else, not just the running part, uh, but we didn't have negative play. We didn't have missed assignments nearly as many in, in the shorter ball game. Uh, you know, I have to give credit to our players. They, they just stepped up in a lot of ways, so that was really exciting to see. Uh, the energy from the sideline was really good. The energy, the, the belief that they were going to get it done on the field was just a little bit different than we've had. In the, in the, did it have to do with shorter not being as good as, a, uh, as successful? Maybe, but we felt like we could get a win and uh, the belief in we were going to get it done, and that's where we got to go into every ball game. Well, now you're going into a game against the University of North Alabama, a team that lost last week to West Florida. And mm -hmm. they're probably off uh, from their historical norm in terms of offense, but they've still got a really good defensive unit. Really good. And they've been p keeping people down and uh, very difficult for people to score on them. You know what? We've got to continue to play and, and build on what we did last week. That's very important. But North Alabama is North Alabama. They're going to be solid. They're, although they've lost some ball games, they've been close. Now, last week they did. West Florida is good. They're six and three, and we know we've been down to West Florida. We faced them and really had a chance to probably win. Now they have their quarterback is is back, and the one that's their starter is there wasn't against us, but he did uh, play extremely well versus North Al. Their defense though played really really well too. The defense got after North Alabama really good, and one of the things that North Al is facing this year they're they're in a transition. They're in a transition going up mm -hmm. from Division two to Division One AA. They're in that transition. They're also in a transition of a new head coach, uh, which makes a big difference. When you have a Hall of Fame head coach that retires, it's, it's some big shoes to fill for their other coach. So there's, there's obviously some struggles they're facing. We want to give them some more struggles this week, and that's our plan. Uh, but uh, definitely, they're going to be a good football team. Well, Coach, we are looking forward to that ball game, and uh, again, we thank you for your time this week and every week this week during this uh, every week during the season this year, and we appreciate it. And good luck. Thank you so much, Reed.